spoke to Emma about six years ago after she fell from the sky, jumped out of a plane skydiving, had the instructor on the back there. Uh, it was going to be one of those great moments that you never forget. Well, she never forgot because the bastard of a parachute didn't open. I know. And she plummeted 14,000 feet. God only knows what was going through your mind when that bloody parachute wasn't opening. Then hit the ground conscious with the instructor on the back and both people survived. I Amazing know. It's an incredible story. She has a book out now called The Girl Who Fell From The Sky and her name is Emma Carey and she's joining us now. Hi, Hi Emma. Hi, Emma. Good morning. How are hey. you? Hey. Thanks for having me. Oh, Long time thanks no for chat. coming on the show because, I mean, this is a fascinating story and I was reading in your book that you really were excited about this skydive. You're in the Swiss Alps, right? This yeah. is where it happened. And you had your your best friend with you and I think she wasn't that keen to do it. She was just there to support <laughs> you. but she No, did. I really made her do it, so thank R- God it oh, didn't really? happen to her. Can you imagine? Oh, I know. I thought as I was reading the book, I thought, oh, imagine if it happened to her. Um, but so Yes. She was not keen. You're like, let's do it. It's a one in a lifetime. We've got to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there wow. was no no thought in my mind of how dangerous it was, which sounds so silly, but I was just nothing but excited. Have you, you guys yeah. done it? You, no, no, but I thought about doing it. And now that I've read your story, I don't think I will. Oh, yeah, yeah, I fear right. that I deter a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, but you're not the... So tell me, you, you jump out of this. It was in a helicopter, wasn't yeah. it? Oh, right, right. So you're yeah. in a helicopter and you're attached to your instructor. You have asked your instructor... Has anyone ever died, or has there any been you know incidents? And the only oh, you thing you did that, ask that the only thing that happened was someone broke their foot, and that was it, yeah. right? I was just trying to make chit chat on the way up because it wasn't until we were in the helicopter on the way up that I finally started to feel nervous. So I said, "Has anyone been injured with you?" And he just said, "Someone had broken their ankle." On a rocky landing. Was he one of those it. extreme sports type of guys that might have been like crushing on Molly for the last four days and then packed that parachute in a hurry and yeah, let's just live radical? And is he one of those? Was it? They're <laughs> all like that. Those guys, right? Um, I don't know. He'd done so many jumps. All I know is, I think he said he'd done nearly ten thousand or something. <gasps> oh so I wow! Thought, so you felt pretty safe. Safe. Yeah, felt very safe. Okay, yeah. so you're free falling, and that moment is meant to happen the free fall, and you're just loving it. The and face goes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Your lips and everything, that's fun. <laughs> and then you realize you're getting close, you, you get the sign from the instructor, we're about to open the parachute, which means you have to t- you cross your arms, and no parachute is there. And you see it as a tangled mess flying in front of you. Is that right? Yeah, so I felt the tap on my shoulder, which means cross your arms over your chest and wait for the parachute to be pulled. But all I felt was my hair being ripped backwards. And I thought, that's so weird that no one warns you that it hurts your hair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And then at first, because I'd never done it before, I didn't know immediately that something was wrong. I didn't know what to expect. And when you're that high up, the ground all looks the same you can't tell how fast you're falling but sure. as you get closer you realize and you can see everything clearer you realize just how fast you're going and when and did you realize a- shit something's really wrong here and i'm in trouble when I saw the parachute tangled up in front of me instead of above me. And was I was yelling out to the instructor. Was, yeah. No, I was yelling out to him, but he wasn't responding. And I, I didn't realise at the time, but that was because he was unconscious. He actually got strangled by the cords of the parachute as they were coming oh. out. Oh so that explains God. why he couldn't untangle oh. the parachute or he couldn't do anything and to you, fix it. And you couldn't even turn round to look because of the velocity. So yeah. you're just get plummeting and the earth is now becoming clearer and clearer because you're getting closer and closer. So tell oh. tell Carl what kind of thoughts you had going through your mind because I mentioned to him earlier you were thinking about the sa- a sandwich that you really wanted to eat. And I thought, well, <laughs> what was on that sandwich that was so in your mind? It was a good sandwich. But that, I, I was just so certain that I was about to die. And it's so funny how... Uh, that I was thinking about all the big things, my family, my friends, all of that. But I was also thinking about all the tiny mundane things that you don't realise you miss about, that you're going to miss about life, like <laughs> eating a sandwich. Or I was meant to be going to Rome the next day. I was on this trip around Europe. Um, and I and just were you really thinking, oh, I'm going to die here. I'm not even going to get my Rome trip. Is that what yeah, you were thinking? Yeah, I was like, what a rip off. I've gone on this three month trip and I'm only five days in. What a waste of money. Oh, oh wow. It's me. funny because you never know what would go through someone's mind no. when they think they're going to die. And how long do you reckon that moment was between seeing that tangled parachute and hitting the ground? How long did you have to think about death? It probably was only a minute, but 
it, that's a long time, time though yeah but time didn't seem to flow like i was used to because i had it it happened so fast but at the same time i had so much time to think and i remember feeling such a deep sense of regret at not making the most of life up until that moment and i thought what a shame that I'm only realising how much I want to live when I've got 10 seconds left. And you were conscious when you hit the ground. So we're talking 20 metres, 10 metres, 5 metres, 1 metre. You're look, you're like, this is it. it I'm done. I'm, I'm yeah. toast. Yeah, yeah. There was, uh, it, was, it was like a countdown. And I just thought, this is the last thing I'm ever going to see. This is the last thing I'm ever going to feel. It was and he's terrifying. on your back and you're hitting the ground. For, and you, uh, I can't even. Did you close your eyes? freaks me out. I feel like I was very awake for it because yeah. I remember it all so vividly. I remember exactly what it looked like, how it felt. How did it feel when you hit the ground? Like when you went boom. Face first, down, on what, the ground. What, can you even describe that to someone or is that not possible to describe? Yeah, well, my very first thought, and again, all of these thoughts would have happened within like one second. Yeah. yeah. But my very first thought was just complete shock, like as if I was in a skydiving accident. It just seemed so far-fetched mm-hmm. and I hadn't even pondered it. So it, it just w- felt so bizarre. And then the next thing I remember feeling was just the most intense pain throughout my oh. whole body. Oh. I didn't even know where it was coming from. But then the next, which was the scariest part, was I I was pinned to the ground by him and I tried to like move my neck to look around and I realised <sighs> we were in the middle of the Swiss Alps, nobody was around, and I thought he was dead, but he survived, but I didn't know that at the was time. Was there snow so I, or just hard No, ground? it was summer. It was summer, but oh. I thought it's up to me to go and get help here, and it was in that moment when I tried to roll over to get him off me and I tried to stand up that I realised I was completely paralysed from the waist down. Oh, you must have panicked. Like, yes. you, now you're wondering, are you ever going to walk again? Will you survive this? Will you even get help? Do Will people you know where you are? Like, yeah, yeah. How, that would have been the, f- the most scary, that you're in the mountain somewhere. Yeah, do people know? Because you would have been way off track to where you're supposed to land, right? Yeah, we definitely weren't where we were meant to land, but thankfully... Uh, my friend Gemma was jumping after me and she didn't see it happen, but her instructor must have because they followed us down and landed next to us. And then they Oh, could call that help. would have been the best thing in the world seeing your yeah. girlfriend land oh. there. And you're, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I've got, I can't feel it. Were yeah. you able and to speak? she was like, told you we shouldn't have done this. Oh, what <laughs> oh. a bitch. Oh. Save your time. No, no, no. Later, she, she was great to you. <laughs> no, she, she was amazing. Yeah, yeah she, she was. She was amazing. And she when, went into action. And she called um, the emergency people and a helicopter came and picked us up and took us to hospital. And then when you were in hospital, you you went and had an operation and you woke up from the operation and no one no one you knew was around you that Gemma wasn't there um, you didn't know if your family had been told but then the doctor came in and what did he say to you after that operation? Um, it was very casual and I don't know if it was a language barrier because uh, he couldn't really speak fluent English so it's, it was so hard to know what was happening but yeah. I was told that I was now a paraplegic, I had broken my back and my pelvis, all these other things but that I would never walk again and then he just so casually left the room and I was like, okay. Uh, I know. Because you I were don't know saying, what to do with this information. Yeah, you were saying when you see that in the movies where someone's on the hospital bed and they're told they can't walk again, everyone's around them supporting them and it's a real moment. But for you, it was just like, yeah, your legs, you'll never walk again and it's permanent. And he like just he walked walks in with off. a chart and he's like, yeah, so what's wrong? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're paraplegic. Okay. <laughs> Dinner will be. Did you ever get the sandwich? Is what I want to know. <laughs> no, I didn't get the sandwich. <laughs> it so must be mouldy by now. It, it, it would have been like because you, you're fine now, right? I mean, you'd, you're Are you told walking? you never could uh, walk again. You're fine. Stand up. I'm, I'm not completely fine. Proof okay. of standing. I, I can stand. stand. Up. I look at that. Oh, you can stand. Oh, look, that's uh, unbelievable. But no, I'm not completely fine now. I still there's still so many parts which I had no idea about that come along with being a paraplegic, like loss of I still can't feel anything from the waist down. Oh, you, um, I lost you bladder walk, and bowel control, so I can need to use catheters. You can't, you wait, wait. can't feel anything. Are you said, so, yeah, you can walk, but you want you don't. That, that must. How do you walk if you can't feel? Yeah, so I didn't realize, but it's two different nerves for sensory and motor. So my sensory nerve must have just been a lot more damaged. But at first, without being able to feel, the most difficult part was balance because I can't tell where my legs are in relation to my body. So I couldn't tell when they were touching the ground, when they're in front of me, behind me. Of course. So balance was really tricky. And it hasn't gotten better, but I think I've just adapted to that way because now, it's been so many years you now. You said you don't know when you're going to the toilet either. 
Yeah, so I need to use catheters and enemas and I've lost that sense of... I can't, I can't remember how it feels to just know that you need to go. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Really? So, yeah, there, there's so many parts that come along um, with paraplegia, which most people don't know. I, If I saw someone in a wheelchair pre-accident, I just assumed their legs didn't work and that was that. But there's so much more to it. Yeah. So what about, what about sexual stuff? Like, is that is that all messed up as well? Or, like, you can't feel that? Or I can't feel that. Like, it's fine, but I, I can't. Yeah, I can't feel it. You still do it? Yeah. But you don't care if you're feeling or not. You just like the. Well, I don't yeah. really have a choice. <laughs> There's nothing well, I can really do about it. But you want, so you want to do it. Uh, so you got a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Is wow. it the same partner that? No. Re- no. 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 Oh, so how? Well, then, how oh, long did the relationship <laughs> last with him after the accident? Uh not very long. He uh, went overseas while I was in hospital still. Oh. Uh, but he continued but we were, the trip. How, how long did he? How long were you guys together for? Uh, three years before that. But, I mean, hang on, in hang hindsight... On, hang on, hang on. He, continued, he continued the trip while you were paralysed in hospital in a foreign country. Well, look, it sounds bad. But in hindsight, we were so, we were 20 years old. We were very young and, you know, we don't Even always make the best so decisions. Oh, no. Because no, yeah, one right, of your last it. things He's... that you thought about was, <laughs> I hope Ben knows how much I love him. That, well, that was one of your last thoughts that you had before you plummeted to the ground and this guy didn't even stick around. <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> look, it's really sweet you don't want to you don't want to kick him about. I know. And it's, that's really nice. It shows you're a nice lady. Yeah. But that's a shit go. Like, that even is. I'd stay. You know, and I'm the worst person <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. He, I cannot believe he continued with the trip. Well, it was paid for, so no refunds. Did you, know you what kids are like. did that make <laughs> it feel all the more harder to deal, to cope with what was going on? The Absolutely, that, yeah. because it just felt like a loss of my entire identity. I could no longer do all the physical things that I loved. I couldn't work. I was living in hospital and losing my relationship as well. I just Gosh. felt like my entire life that I oh. had built before was gone in a, in a moment, which was a very bizarre feeling. You poor thing. Gosh, you've been, you know, it's amazing your survival story, I have to say. Let's roll back to the sex stuff. So <laughs> when you meet the new guy... Mm-hmm. And it's you know you like each other and you you know you got the spark flying. When do you bring up? Hey, before we have sex, I got to unhook all my bags and you can go to town on me and I'll feel nothing. But I'm into it. How do you have that conversation? Well, I don't have any bags or anything. Oh. Um, I use intermittent catheters, so there's nothing attached to me. I just use one and then throw it out, and then that's that. Yeah. Um, so right. There's nothing yeah. There. So but you just I- sort of drain yourself, and then you yep. don't have to. You don't. You don't mess yourself or anything like that. Uh, do, yeah. Yeah. It can but happen. I feel. I'm very open about these things, so I feel like even before I would get into a relationship with someone, I would have already told. I feel like I just tell people as soon as I meet them. It's yeah. not well, a rip the band aid off. Yeah. It's right. not a thing not, for me. Not, I, not a shameful hidden thing. You're open with it all. Yeah, I when I first left hospital and I was having accidents all the time, I was really embarrassed and ashamed, and I'd never wanted to leave the house, and mm, I just sure. became such a hermit. And I realized very quickly that you know I'd survived this impossible thing and I didn't think the reason was to stay at home and be sad for the rest of my life. So I just decided to tell people and see what happened and it turns out literally no one cares. (laughs) Literally no (laughs) one cares. Everyone was cool with it. It wasn't a problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just such, it's such a freeing way to live to not be holding, keeping secrets like that and just to be open Mm. and... I agree, yeah. yeah. That's a fact. What a a wonderful, positive life you've got. Yeah. That takes a lot of strength the way you've managed to come out the other side. Uh, You know, I mean... Can you orgasm or what happens there? No. 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 Can you, you, I mean, you maybe you, you there's were, a way, but I'm yet to yet to find it. Yeah. Oh, oh well, that's yeah. No, that's well, a hey, you're alive for, for and you're here. Boyfriend. I think that's the main thing. Uh, it's incredible, right? It's a real miracle. It is a real miracle. Yeah, I feel. What I about feel the instructor? Lucky. What happened to him? Did he did yeah. he make it or what happened? Uh, there? So he survived, and he he's overseas, so I haven't spoken to him much. But as far as I know, his legs were shattered, and he had to have a lot of surgeries on them. But I think he's okay now. So can he walk? Is he fine? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because you would have taken a bit of the brunt for him. Yeah, well, he landed on me. So I was like like a landing cushion. Oh. Can I ask, do you know, like, what the odds are of surviving falling without a parachute from the sky? I don't know, but probably not good. (laughs) Yeah. Like, do you know what, was there some reason why you guys survived? (laughs) 
I have no idea. I mean, we landed on grass, which you wouldn't yeah. think would make a difference, but a metre away, there was a bitumen road and it was in the Swiss Alps. So there were cliffs, there were trees, lakes, oh. all these other things. So I think we landed in the best possible place. But the way, and this is just me piecing this together, I have no idea if this is true or not, but what I think happened is that he was a lot taller than me mm -hmm. and because he was unconscious, his body was like floppy jelly yeah. whereas i was awake so i was like crunched up so i imagine that his legs are what hit first which is why they were shattered and that maybe took right. some of the uh. oh, so think, you landed feet first see i just imagine you like laying on a bed laying your whole body hitting at the ground but your well, feet I think hit his first. legs hit and then we and then we went forward and so apparently it's better in that situation if you are unconscious. It's better for your body to not be rigid. I heard that. I've got, I've got the yeah. official. I've got the official survival rate of such a fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Where'd like you it's. Get this? <laughs> we, we've got people here. That's what you think. I'm. You think I've got a brain? I'm fed all this shit. <laughs> the yep, official survival rate is. 0.006 percent. Oh gosh! Less, wow. Like that is that is unbelievable. It's a miracle. It's a true yeah. miracle. Yeah, I feel very lucky. Yeah, that's incredible. God, what a, what's the book called again, Jackie? It's oh, that, the I, girl, people want to read this. The girl who fell from the sky. It's yeah, out now. That sounds now. like a miracle in itself, just the name of it. And then yeah. you realise that there's a true miracle inside the pages. Make sure you check it out, guys. It's a great read. Emma, thank you for sharing your story on air with us, and we're glad you survived this. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. I, I just can't get my head around. It's almost too unbelievable to, to be true. I know. Well, this is what we're going to take calls on 131065, your amazing survival stories. Do oh, I, no one's going to beat uh, that one. Uh, <laughs> Good uh, luck to be that. Who to beat knows? That. Who knows what we will get? Did you okay. defy the odds and survive something crazy? We want to hear from you. Give us a call, 131065. Let's go. Jackie O. Catch up on Kyle and Jackie O. Search Kyle and Jackie O on iHeartRadio. Or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> Kiss.